Alright guys, what's going on? My name is Vitaly, this is my little brother Ruslan. Today we're going to be reviewing my 2014 Audi A4 and his 2017 Audi A4. So, we just want to compare the two cars. They're very similar. They're, this one's a B8.5 and this one's a B9. Um, so we're going to start off with the, the exterior of the car, what it looks like. So, as you can see, the headlights is a big difference. You kind of have like the cutouts in the B9. Um, more aggressive look, I'd say. Um, the grille is a little bit more wider and sharper on the edges as for this one's a little bit more rounded. Now of course this is an aftermarket grille, this is a RS4 style, same with this one. They're, they're similar but they're still not the original, the A4 doesn't come with that. Um, so I got my car on eBay with a salvage title, it was originally hit in the front so the front end was all smashed, airbags were good, no frame damage so everything was good. He guys also on eBay. Yeah, so uh, back in January, I purchased this car from uh, Miami, Florida. So it turns out it was caught up in a flood back in New Jersey in December. Um, and uh, ever since it was rebuilt from salvage, uh, no issues whatsoever. Uh, no uh, sort of collision, uh, just a uh, fresh water flood. You've had this car for what, like about a month, two months you've been driving it? Yeah. So what would you say, what are the quirks and features of this beautiful car? What well, would you say, what do you like about it most? Uh, I think one of the best parts about it is just the acceleration when you when you step on the, the gas pedal. Uh, it has 252 horsepower, yeah, it really packs a punch. Uh, once, they've, uh, once they've tuned it, it, it really does great. Yep. And my car comes with 220 horsepower. Now, if you punch it, you gotta wait a little bit. You gotta, you know, it's not not as not the fastest car. At first, you know, when I first got it, it was pretty quick. But I think there's a turbo lag now. I don't know. Maybe it needs a turbo rebuild. Who knows? So let's kind of walk around. We'll show you. First, we're gonna go over the B9. So. I want to explain what kind of modifications you did to the car. Yeah, so uh, one of the first modifications I did is I went ahead and I got the. I went ahead and then I did really good with the R. Yeah. If you don't it needs it to out, go down yeah, a little bit. It's a little bit higher than the others. Uh, and then afterwards, we went ahead and updated these vents uh, to also an R RS4 style to match the honeycomb as the grill does. Uh, and we also went ahead and uh, made all the logos and emblems black so that it matches um, matches very well. And also, before we do that. Got the plate mount holder. Yeah, the plate honestly, mount I think holder. it looks kind of cool when it's on the side. Yeah, I know this is preference. Support aviation, uh, just to support aviation. All right. I wonder why. Yeah. The next modification that we made was uh, the dynamic turn signals. So you can see that the LED it follows towards the outwards of the car to make it a, a, a more uh, more streamlined sort of configuration. Uh, very similar to how the tail lights work when you're using the turn signal. Um, Finally, the last modification that we did was the rims. Uh, so we went ahead and purchased uh, some 19-inch wheels, uh, and you can see that they have a uh, pretty sweet design on them. They are left and right dependent. It resembles a pinwheel, so they are left and right dependent. Yep. And then, so you originally had 17s on it, right? Yeah, 17. And you went to stock. 19s. Yep. How big of a difference is it with the 19s? Um, in terms of ride quality, I would say it didn't very. Uh, it didn't go down by much. Uh, the reason for that is it, the car has coilovers from H and R, and that really helps with the with the ride suspension. Uh, since you have dampeners and springs that are designed to work with each other, uh, and it also gives uh, an extra layer of flexibility to be able to uh, adjust the height size as uh, height ride as needed. Nice, um, cool. And uh, so, what are you sitting at right now? Ground clearance. What six do you got, and like a half inches. Six and a half from inches. The front bumper. Okay. So that's with H and R. Uh, coil over six and a half and we're lowered all the way. We're slammed to the yeah. very very bottom. Yep And um, obviously with 19 inch wheels. A few other things I want to mention is uh, we went ahead and smoked these um, These side markers based on uh, suggestions from you guys. Uh, I think it makes it look much more uh, Much more streamlined with the rest of the, the sort of gla glossy black that we see here uh, It was pretty awful with the with the orange ones that were stock and we we tinted the the car I believe it was do you know what percentage it was? Um, and then with the visor, so turned out really nice. And then in the back, it's pretty much all stock. All we did was just remove the back emblems and got a black Audi emblem. Oh, there is one more. I, I don't think you could see it during the day, but uh, if we were to open the car, yeah, you can't see it at all. But uh, it would be project projecting uh, the Audi Audi rings onto the ground. So that was a pretty simple mod. Cool. Besides that, all that's right. It. So. That's the B9, now we have the B8.5. So, the modifications that I did, 
was that also lower the car. It stayed on H&R springs, not coils, just the regular super sport springs. And it did a 1.2 and a 1.4 drop front and back. Um, also replaced the grill, the RS4 grill. And honestly, nothing really in the front. Um, and then my favorite is the roof rack. This is what keeps me in shape. As you can see, wheels were stock. These will, um, came with the car. And that's pretty much it. Honestly, I didn't do too much. I've had the car for four years. It's been great. Had little, you know, issues with it, but the uh, warranty covered it all, which was the uh, transmission. But other than that, it was pretty good. Also, took remove the uh, emblems. I just I like the clean look. It gives it a really nice touch to it. Um, if we want to go inside, take a look at what it looks like. What a V8.5 looks like. So they're very, very similar. This one is an S-Line package. So it does have the bucket seats where you have like this, I call it the crumb collector. All your crumbs go in here, but it's pretty cool. It looks neat. And then you got the uh, S-Line emblems there. Um, got the uh, updated surround system. The steering wheel is the three, three spoke. All right, so I bought my car back in 2014. Uh, on eBay for 21 and a half um, also $600 for shipping from San Diego and uh, bought mine for 17,000 uh, I cost $650 to ship from Miami Miami Florida and then after registration and all the mods I've uh, put about 23 and a half thousand and these both vehicles are salvage title um, when I got mine it had about three and a half thousand miles on it fairly low and then I had 19 let's uh, take a look at the B9 inside all right, we'll, we'll show you the quirks and features. So unlike the B8.5, uh, the seats are brown and they are not the S-Line package. So uh, they don't have the crumb collector or bucket seats. Uh, very similar, except it's a little bit more, uh, more modern in a sense. Uh, the car features are CarPlay along with some other cool MMI uh, features that allow a very easy phone connection and uh, for the most part, uh, very intuitive design. Uh, one of the interesting things about this car is that when you are on a stoplight... Wait, is that a keyless start? Yes, it is. Um, so it's touch to start. Uh, if you're, for example, on a on a stoplight, uh, you're able to press the brake down harder than usual, and it's gonna put the car in what's called auto stop, where the engine is no longer running. Um, and then once you let go of, of of your brake, it's gonna start up again, similar to how a hybrid would. All right, so we're gonna see how big the trunk is, and that's why we have our friend Sam here, who is six foot three. We're gonna see if he fits in here. So Sam. Sam. <laughs> Alright Sam, new, new, new car. Yeah, new car. Okay, watch your head, watch your head. Watch your head. Okay. And let's go to V-Dubs. Let's go. Alright, we're done. Take, take the shoes. <laughs> right. Sam, Sam oh. Alright Sam, how would you say? Was that pretty comfortable? Yeah. Would you be able to do a road trip in the trunk? Possibly, actually. Yeah. Wow. I think we could fit another two or three people. Another two or three. Yeah. Okay, that's pretty good. Um, I believe you can fit in my car, so we don't have to try it. Same trunk space, but yeah, they're about the same trunk space. So now we're gonna test the back seats, see how much leg room we have. So, hop on in, boys. Seats all the way back. So we are going from this space. <laughs> Sam's a little taller than Sam, I am. How, yeah. how are you feeling? A little bit. Yeah. Are I you mean, feeling comfortable? No. No? My head's well, yeah. kind of touching the ceiling as well. Here. Good thing they have a little dip for the head. Yeah, yeah. So uh, Audi was pretty smart with the key design. They made a little compartment for you to very conveni conveniently place it. And then the other really cool thing about uh, this car is that there's CarPlay enabled. So you just plug in your phone. Uh, CarPlay gets launched on it and we're able to, for example, see maps here uh, and go to whatever destination you want. There's another interesting thing about this car is, you um, can't really see it from where you are, but uh, the compartment for the manual is this very long, long slot that I could put my entire elbow into. Uh, very convenient to use, but um, it's where I keep my glasses and, and other things. It's very useful. Can you, um, can you also pull down the screen? No, I tried um, and I almost broke it, so no, you cannot. Okay, good. good. 
All right, guys, so now we're in the Audi B 8.5. This is what the interior looks like. Not as sleek as the 9. I'll start the car just to show you what we have in here. So over here, pretty similar. I don't have the uh, twist knob for the uh, volume. I just have the um, the e-brake and the start. And then not much features, just the drive select and then the traction control. And then on the steering wheel, got my volume here. The uh, Bluetooth thing that just very very dumb if you ask me a question you have to like repeat like five times at least so very very useless button honestly never use it and then this is like to scroll through my radio channel or music right here all right so up top we have the home link I uh, got the uh, this is the light for the door then these are not really touch they're just a button not like the songs and then case for glasses hey what are you guys breaking there <laughs> so the back um, this one does not come with three zone control, only two. So front driver and passenger, the back they just get whatever is left over. And yeah, uh, good sound system. Honestly, you know, I've always wondered why a driver would need a handle. Never understood this. I use it sometimes. Do you use it? Yeah. Your car, your car has it? Really? That's interesting. I don't know. I, I find it kind of useless. I think if you're driving, should be both hands on the steering wheel for something, you know, something serious. But like, I don't know. Well, that's kind of it, guys, for the interior of the B9 and the B8.5. Uh, let us know what you guys like. Which one do you guys have? And what your guys' quirks and features are. Um, we like to hear. So now that you guys have seen the quirks and features of both cars, we'd like to hear from you. What are your favorite features of each one? Cool. We hope you guys enjoy this video. Please like, subscribe, leave us a comment, and thank you for watching. And stay tuned because we have a few more modifications to make on the B9. So now we want to show you guys like a little drag race. We're not going to go crazy. Um, I know who's going to win. I know that car is faster, but we just want to show what the big difference is. Yeah.